Hello, everyone. What, what are you doing here? I thought we were doing a couples games video. No, this is my solo video. Hello, everyone. Now there's only you and me together. We can go over my top five solo games at the moment. So the reason I like solo mostly is because I'm super introverted and I don't like to play with other people. <laughs> sounds so antisocial. So the main reason I play uh, solo games is because I have no patience whatsoever. I don't like to wait for my opponent's turns. So when I'm over myself, at least I can just have my turn and have my turn and have my turn. And that's what's fun about it. I like to always beat my best call. And solo games are also a good time filler when you only have a few minutes to yourself. So in top five, we have a little app game, which is also based on a board game box. It's Onirim. The goal is to open the four different colored doors by the end of the game. You have an end of cards and you can play a card on your turn, but you can never play the same symbol. There's different symbols like keys, suns, moons, etc. You can never play two of the same symbol in a row, but to open a door, you need to play like three cards of the same color in a row. So for example, moon, sun, moon. Uh, there's also other ways to open the doors, like you have key cards. If you find a door card and you have a key in your hand, you can open a door. But the problem is that you're limited with your deck because if you can't draw and refill your hand, then you lose. And also there's nightmares in the deck, which are negatives. You are forced to either close a door again or lose cards, which will accelerate the end of the game. It's pretty addictive, it's pretty fun. It's a real board game, but I played on my phone and the app is fantastic. First of all, it's free to play. And each time you close the door, you reshuffle the whole deck. So there's a lot of shuffling in the game and the app does that automatically. So it's a time saver, huge, huge time saver. In number four, we have Beta, which is a little fish game that you can play on Board Game Arena. In solo, your goal is to complete three grids that are three by three. You have a hand of three transparent cards, and basically there's like patterns on them, like little fishes, and you can overlap the symbols and the colors on the grids. So you can hide colors, uh, you can form shapes. At the beginning of the game, you're gonna set up six goals that are gonna grant you points if you fulfill their shape. And at the end of the game, you will also score points per the most populous color of fish in each tank. It's a very fast-paced game, it's quick, which is what I like when I have like five minutes, I can just play it and it's not really complicated. As opposed to other solo games, you're not trying to beat an AI, you are just trying to beat your own score. I think my best score is 82, so if you've done better than me, just let me know. <laughs> in number three, it's a game I've already talked about in my top 20, it's Cascadia. This game is fantastic, I play on the website that was made by the publisher. The goals are always the same, unfortunately, but everything is automated, which is fun. It's a double layered puzzle. You're trying to connect the biomes together, but at the same time, you're trying to score points by placing strategically your animals. At the end of your turn, the AI will always take the lowest combination available. So you always have to plan ahead because maybe you won that trial, but you're like, oh, if I don't take it now, then the AI will take it for me. So that's not good, right? I love Cascadia because I love the puzzle aspect. You always want to build the biggest biome of one kind to score the most points, but you never can because you always have to put the animals in strategic places and this is not easy, so it's like a bit, bit of a brain burner. To me, there's a lot of replayability because I love to beat my personal score. The only downside of the website is that you only have the basic animal cards. If you were to play with the real box or if you were playing on tabletop simulator, then you could shuffle the animal cards and have different objectives and ways for the animals to score. But even with the, the website, I just have a lot of fun playing it and everything is automated, which is always what I love. And number two is a game I've been obsessed with. It's made by Phil Walker Harding, who also made Sushi Go. Super! Mega! <laughs> Lucky! Box! It's basically just like an advanced version of Bingo. You have 3x3 three three grids and cards are gonna be revealed with numbers between 1 to 9 and you're gonna cross these numbers on one of your grids. What's so fun is to actually complete a row or a column because you're gonna get the reward next to it. It can be to cross off another number, points, getting lightning bolts, which are basically you can change the value of a number by one 
or moons, which will be points at the end of the game. In the multiplayer version of it, the moons are counted like puddings in Sushigo, which is plus six for whoever has the most and minus six for whoever has the least. But in the solo mode, it's based on the amount of moons you have. So you can have minus one or zero or plus 10 if you have like six or more. The game is played over four rounds. Each time you complete a box, which is your three by three grid, you're gonna get more points if you complete it early. So what I love about the game is the combos. I love to complete a line that will give me a number, that will complete another line, which will give me another number and so on, and then complete two grids in one turn. Oh my God, this is so cool. <laughs> and in number one is a game I fell in love with instantly. It's Acropolis. As soon as it got added on Board Game Arena, I couldn't stop playing. <laughs> Some of you must know that I already love Kingdomino, and I feel it's a similar kind of game. On your turn, you draft a tile, but there's two types of X's. There's the platzas, which are stars, which will multiply the color of a certain biome, and there's the districts, which are the biomes that are going to be multiplied. In solo, you're against an AI. I personally don't really care about it, to be honest. <laughs> I just like to do my best score as usual. What's unique about this game is, as opposed to Kingdom, you know, you can stack tiles on top of each other. So you can hide mistakes <laughs> or you can also get stones, which are a currency in the game to get better tiles later. Also, the tiles on top will be worth the value of the floor they're on. So for example, if you have a red tile on the second floor, it will count as two red tiles instead of one. It's very cool to watch your multiplayer grow as you're playing. One time I had 10 times 17 yellow. It was insane. 170 just from yellow. <laughs> so this was my top five solo games to play online. Let me know your favorite solo games and if you recommend any for me to play. <laughs> the top five couple games are... Bye now! <laughs>